Hey everyone, back again. Today we're going to talk about Thomas Nagel's What is it like to be a bat? Now before jumping into it, hi, I'm David. I explain philosophical concepts and ideas to you in a way to make them accessible to you. So if you're new here, like, share, subscribe. You can see videos are released every week, sometimes twice a week. If you found this on YouTube, you're going to be able to find just the audio alone on any podcast platform under the same name. If you found this as a podcast, you're going to be able to find the video for it on YouTube if you're into that. If you want to help me out, like, share, subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Tell your friends. Who knows? They might get a kick out of it. You can help me out monetarily via Patreon or PayPal. No pressure to do that. You can follow me on Instagram or TikTok or wherever. Links for all these things in the description. And uh, yeah, let's talk about Thomas Nagel's What Is It Like to Be a Bat? Which is a text that's firmly rooted in what is called analytic philosophy, quote unquote. I don't really subscribe to these terms all that much, but in any case, if you're interested in philosophy and you go to a philosophy department somewhere, you're going to have to read Thomas Nagel's What Is It Like to Be a Bat? I'll just go to the whole time. Thomas Nagel's, I'm just going to say the whole thing, his whole name and the title. I'm kidding. So he starts out by saying that consciousness presents a fundamental problem to the mind body problem, or it throws a wrench in the mind body problem. So the mind body problem is the problem of reconciling the mind and the body. Because these are two very different things. The mind works in intangibles. The mind works in mental images. That is, the mind conjures things up in our mind, like I can come up with the image of a chair, you can come up with the image of something, I'm sure, that isn't physical. It is intangible. Whereas the body deals with the physical. And we can see the body. We can touch the body. I cannot see what you are thinking. That would be weird. Maybe some people can do that. That'd be cool, I guess, but also weird. So the mind-body problem essentially tries to reconcile these different things. Now, in response to the mind-body problem, there are reductionists, or reductive physicalists, or physicalists, or so many different terms, of people who think that, well, who cares? I mean, you have mental images, but we can explain everything that the mind does Physically, you know, we can now go into the mind and, you know, identify all the firing neurons that make things work, that make consciousness, that make mental images possible. But this is exactly what Thomas Nagel and his What Is It Like to Be a Bat criticizes, in that consciousness is never out there in the world. It's never like a physical thing. It only ever exists really in us as an intangible way that we have a relationship with our world and how this is connected to our very capacity to exist in the world that is not physical. So even though we can explain everything physically, technically, how it works, we don't understand why it works that way. We don't understand what it would be like to be otherwise if we weren't human. We are very much beholden to our own subjective experience as humans and as individuals like uh, my experience is going to be very different from yours no matter how good our tools get at identifying the physical parts of our brain so this is the problem that nagel is identifying and trying to respond to in what is it like to be a bat other questions include like how do the mind and body really interact and are mental events and mental phenomena can they really be fully explained physically i mean these are all things to consider through various thoughts ex thought experiments like the brain and a vat thing, and so many other um, hypotheticals that people in quote-unquote analytic philosophy like to do. At least that's, to me, one of the determining factors of analytic philosophy is using very strange examples to make sense of our experience in the world instead of just thinking about the world itself. So between species, we have very different ways of engaging with the world. Between people, we have very different experiences with consciousness, with experience itself. We, you know, our, our histories determine who we are. Our thought processes determine who we are. And like I suggested earlier, no amount of physical reduction of our brains and our personalities and our bodies are going to help anyone else, a scientist or like a Martian from another planet, make sense of us as humans or as or me as an individual. So like there's always going to be something else going on here. And what Nagel is getting at is that we have to embrace that there's going to be this kind of gray zone. We might be able to solve it eventually, 
but we, we aren't there yet and we can't claim that you know that we can just solve this by pointing to all the physical things going on so any of our efforts to try to understand another species or another human through these physical properties is always going to be limited and we have to really accept that that is our relationship to them even through our tools are going to be mediated through our own understanding of the world through our own minds our own consciousness our own ability to experience the world and so we arrive at the bat of Thomas Nagel's What Is It Like to Be a Bat? Where he suggests that in the case of a bat that experiences the world just very much differently than us, you know, a bat uses sonar, a bat will shoot out a noise and then use that noise to experience the world. That noise, because noise is waves, and the waves will hit things and bounce back and that's how the bat can tell where things are and the shapes of things and whether it's a predator. Very different from us. So he's like, it is impossible for us to know what it is like to be a bat. None of us can do it. We can, you know, do 3D modeling of how a bat actually does its thing, but even our seeing that, even if we had like this perfect VR thing, all we are doing is seeing the bat through our eyes, through our ears, through our noses. It's not like we can become the bat no matter how good our tools of approximation of the bat can be. And let's say, hypothetically, I became a bat. Just like that, I, you know, I was just a bat all of a sudden. Would I have any clue what the hell was going on? Like if I just became a bat and I had the memory of what it was like to be a human, I wouldn't, I would probably perish immediately. I wouldn't be able to make sense of what was happening. Like your, the, everything would be totally different. Even if, like, I, you know, I brought my memory with me, I know who I was, my experience of the world, just because the physical body I'm in is totally different, I wouldn't be able to make any sense of it. I would just be totally lost. And so even in those situations where you perfectly become that thing, you are not going to have the ability to just understand it, to make sense of it, and to recollect it or be able to communicate that at all. Even if I could be a talking bat, like even so, like you just couldn't do it. So I can only know what it is like to be a bat through the filter of myself and I can only approximate it. I can't actually know fully what it is like to be a bat. Now I can have understandings of the same things the bat might be engaging with. Like the bat uses sonar to be able to see a wall through the way it knows how to see. I can also see that wall, and maybe if I could talk to the bat, we could have a better understanding of a wall, like to know what makes up a wall. My relationship to it is like through touch and through sight. For the bat, it has a relationship with the wall through sound. I mean, if we were to collate to bring together that knowledge, we might be able to come up with a better idea of what a wall is, but I don't actually have the ability to understand the very structure of the consciousness of the mind of that bat. And the impossibility of knowing what it is like to be a bat of Thomas Nagel's what it is like to be a bat is, you know, even we, could, we don't even need to use a bat. If I were to become another human, if I was just put into another human's body with their mind, their view of the world, it would be horrifying. I would not be able to make any sense of it. There's a, in the classic movie Scooby-Doo with the island, there's this one scene where one character becomes another or like Freaky Friday or any one of these funny films where a character inhabits the body of someone else and they just, it doesn't phase them at all really. They just, you know, they're in a new body, the same mind. But that completely discounts, and I'm not expecting that these movies had to address this philosophical dilemma at all, but it completely discounts the complexity of that possibility, of what that would actually entail to inhabit the body of someone else. I mean, physically it'd be weird, but their very mind structure determined completely by their histories, the way that they think, the language, like how they use language within their own brain to understand their lives, to understand themselves, their relationship with their emotional capacity, all of this makes it them who they are. And if I were to just inhabit someone else's body, I would have to take that all on and it would be, I wouldn't be able to make sense of it. I would probably just like collapse of being totally overwhelmed and not being able to actually understand the structure. And this is dealing with humans with the same language, maybe even in the same neighborhood, like in the case of Freaky Friday. I mean, 
Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, great movie, right? Of course. But still, like, it would be impossible to inhabit the body of somebody else. So with all of this, it seems absurd to suggest that the true nature of experience can be understood physically, purely physically. Like there is so much else going on here in the very structure of our minds that is shaped through our histories, through our ability to experience the world, through our faculties of understanding, through our senses that shape who we are, that go far beyond just the physical. Not to mention like trauma too, like how experiencing a specific event in the world will shape who you are and how you think and exist in the world. So as far as Thomas Nagel is concerned and what it is like to be a bat, any effort to try to find the subjective truth of consciousness, the mind-body problem by appealing purely to physicalism is leading us further away from the truth than closer to it. And his dissatisfaction extends to psychology, well, specifically behaviorism, I assume he's referring to like B.F. Skinner here, although it's not mentioned. Uh, B.F. Skinner, the idea that people can just be shaped by changing the type of stimul stimuli and stimulation that they experience. And you can shape someone that way, which completely discounts this mysterious element of consciousness that exists well beyond just the physical. So what's the solution then? Well, for him, he, he's like, we, we, there is no solution right now, but perhaps we can push towards what he calls an objective phenomenology that would approximate and understand the subjective nature of, a, of really consciousness. And we would de develop the tools not to understand someone else's consciousness, to understand consciousness itself, but provide the tools for someone to be able to more accurately express their own conscious experience. And over time, we accrue more and more knowledge about it. Maybe we will arrive at a closer understanding of what consciousness is in the mind-body dualism problem. But I don't know. I don't even know. Like To me, reading this, I'm like, well, you're, I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, even if someone got very good at explaining their own experience, I would only hear it through my own consciousness, my own understanding. And so perhaps it's something that will never be fully accomplished. But in any case, it's a noble effort. And yeah, that's Thomas Nagel's What Is It Like to Be a Bat? If there's anything I excluded, I'd love to hear about it, or anything I got wrong, I'd love to hear about it. But tell me, like, do you buy it? Are you, you think that Nagel is offering us something interesting here? Is he just totally off the mark? Like, what's the point in talking about this, maybe? You know, let me know what you think. If you like what I did, like, share, subscribe, and then you'll see videos I release every single week, sometimes twice a week. Wouldn't that be great? If you like this, tell your friends, and on that note, take care.